North-South is uh, a bit of a long rambling story really and I'm not sure the heart of the story is really that important uh, but the heart of the story is uh, an explanation of how the gods of Celtic mythology meet one by one the gods of Māori mythology or some of the gods on both sides and uh, and it tries to tra traverse the, the themes of epic poetry, love, hate, um, landscape, metamorphosis. And as the gods meet, two of them on either side fall in love and a child is born to them illegitimately, who becomes the prototypical god who has uh, in his arms both ways. And then his journey uh, through those cultures, his growing up, his performing of tasks, and his death and metamorphosis. It's not so much the central core, in some ways that's a conceit and an accident. Um, it's what spirals off it, uh, the chance to pursue different themes, uh, use different voices, I think, as much as anything. And uh, a lot of those subplots, again, were completely accidental. Um, but it's sort of like a fern frond, you know, it has that wobbly middle and lots of spirals coming off. And it's really interesting to see it sort of, there's no central place to the whole story, it just flowers out all over the place. Voodoo the wise, what place am I? Kahu, why do you cock your head? It was quite a deliberate choice at the beginning to use lots of different voices and in some ways uh, that began it rather than a narrative idea. So I thought I would use forms that were either song forms um, from both cultures uh, or poetry forms and play with different ones and, uh, because in some ways that's the vocabulary of poetry and song and the historical forms to draw on. So I thought I want to use haka, I want to use waiata tangi or lament, waiata aroha love songs, uh, ori ori lullaby. Um, that reflect Māori forms, but I also wanted to use Celtic forms or European forms, um, things like hymns, sea shanties, as well as the old epic poems, uh, the rhyming couplets, and get a little bit of everything, because in some ways we're an accumulation of all those different voices, and when you put our musics together, the musics of our spoken voice are in those forms, rather than in an instrument. Um, so that's the way I approached it. So I then wanted to find ways I could use those different voices. So each of the poems is based on a particular form, triads. Um, so what would it be like to splice a triad with a haka? Uh, because you're quite, both quite declamatory. The rake and the axe, the devil and tax, no bloody thanks. hey ha ha hey ha ha I've kept playing with that idea. Um, which is one of the great joys of North South. It's like, oh yeah, this is fun. Uh, and it's making me write in a different way. Um, it's making me use tight rhyme in haka and in, in, in um, shanty um, in ways that I wouldn't have in my early career writing. Uh, so it's been quite creative and, and yeah, it's fun to keep playing with. I love her still I will unfold. Well the role of the music in the show was um, incredibly important because they were all written uh, with music in mind and so being able to physically have music in and around the poems it was one of those things that pops them into 3D. So it was great fun but even more than that on the stage it's not about music and words it's about it, there becomes three different voices and the way that Richard plays and Bob plays is a manifestation of their personality and the personalities they're playing in the music. And I just happen to be singing with a spoken voice, um, if that makes sense. So we're, all, we're either three people speaking or we're three musical instruments. Then it becomes an interaction and it becomes a live thing and you bouncing. I found myself able to bounce off another consciousness in the same poem rather than being all my consciousness. So that person could be Tangaro or that person could be um, Hiniti Tama or that person could be Kuhalan um, and um, bring their own personality and it adds that dimension to it. 
But beyond all that, just the fun of working with Bob and Richard, really, who are, are good friends and people I'd worked with before. The tail's applied to the crack of your ass, the lashing aligned to the mast fore and aft, the rabbit is back in his hole at long last, over, under, through and around. The sea is a devil, the ship is a pitch, hitching her skirts and licking her lips, opening her legs to his monkey's fist, over, under, through and around. I loved working with Sarah because I loved seeing another creative consciousness take something I'd written and interpret it in a completely different way. Not necessarily the detailed meaning, but the way it may be said or spoken or projected. I'd worked on them before, but every one of them I just yelled, because <laughs> it's my idea of, um, of projecting it was just to increase the volume. Um, but to see her take them and introduce shade into them was wonderful and I felt like they were an incredibly safe pair of hands but also um, taken places. It's like seeing your kids go off and learn something different um, and be better for it. And I desperately felt like I was trying to do justice to what she wanted me to do and uh, earned great respect for what actors do. People will call you a performance poet before but I never bought that. It's just something people say. In some ways it's cliched. Uh, I don't perform my poetry. I read my poetry. I chat about my poetry. They're fireside chats. I connect with an audience um, as part of um, a, a talk with them. It's that sort of thing. It's not a performance in the way North South is. North South's a completely different beast. And you generate one energy when you chat and talk and build rapport. And it's a, it's as valuable a rapport, but there's something quite different about the way you create a whole um, uh, pit of imagination for them to interact with when you perform North-South. As long as you connect to the audience, they'll forgive all your sin if you connect. Some of the themes of my work have been about the the 3D shape of a poem, that it's not a flat thing snapped in paper, that it's a shape that's approximated and when you add music or the human voice or even physical shape you can uh, help to puff it up into its third dimension um, in a way that happens when it's read but not with an audience it just happens between the person and the page and the poem hovers in between you as it reaches out and crystallizes uh, into someone's mind but you can do that with an audience and yeah it makes me think there's a whole thing called oral poetry and I get how now how it might have worked. But it's quite intense and focusing. Um, yeah, so I don't know where that will go, but I'd like to play with it again. To e, to e sweet reproach when they argue in your throat. To e, to e kindest hope when they dance in every note.